these two swimmers right here will do battle here. And I think this is a huge race to start this match because this sets the tone, I think, for the rest of the way, especially on the women's side. All right, nine points to the winner who will win the first battle of match number eight. The superheroes are here and ready to go. Waddle's been 56-2. And Dahlia hasn't been that far behind, 56-6. The problem with Dahlia up to this point, she just hasn't been able to get out very fast. The fastest split she's been out is 27 flat. Now she comes home like a bat. You can't believe how fast she comes home, but she just has not been able to get out. That's a good split for her right there, 0.17 behind the leader and Waddle sitting in second. Zerkova, though, the leader in lane number two at the bottom. Dahlia, Erica Brown, both moving up. Erica Brown's in lane number five in the middle. Dahlia's in lane number six, and Dahlia pops up even with Marie Waddle. London, Cali trying to get the first race, and the first win of match eight goes to the Condors. And again, this is where it is so big, the winner gets the extra points for the jackpot. She snatches away one point from Emily Large, and it'll be 10 points going to, with Dahlia Erica Brown getting three points with 13 total points. One one hundredth of a second. That's how close that race was, and we said it from the beginning, this was going to be a battle between two fantastic world-class swimmers, and it paid off in a big time. One one hundredth of a second. Blue cap, there's Dahlia. Right there in the dark cap. That's Waddle, watch him come into the end. I thought Waddle surged ahead. How did Dahlia get her hand on the wall first? I have no idea, but she did. Best time of the season, and big points for Cali to start it all off. There's the team totals in the Hunter Butterfly. Early lead. Condors with 13 points because of the jackpot performance for Dahlia, who gets her fourth win. Five-time Olympian Mark Foster is down with her. All right, Kelsey Dahlia getting the Cali Condors off to a great start. And now they bring on Superman himself and Caleb Dressel. <laughs> 52 and a half points in the first match, 75 points in the second match. Think about how big that is in a match where you may score five to 600 points to have one man that can tally between 50 and 75 of them for your team. He is all that and a bag of chips. 23-1 he went out in, so we'll watch the split. Anything under 49 would be fantastic for Caleb at this point. He's got the second fastest time to Shields. Shields is the only one that has broken 49. He did that for the current earlier, 48-9. So I know he'd like to get under 49. Again, it's hard to tell where all the... All these swimmers are at in their training. Some of them probably went back to work really hard. So I don't think you're going to see a lot of a lot of tapering here at the top two. Marcus Kush, he's got the fourth fastest time of the season. He's just inside, and it's Kawamoto in lane number seven for well, the had, Tokyo Frog Kings. Uh, Bernie, you had three different runners up here. Uh, Kawamoto, Litchfield, and Kush have all, all have been runner up in the Hunter Fly. Even Dressel was runner up one time, but he's won as well. But Dressel comes flying home, the first of eight events, and he wins the 100 Butterfly for the fourth time. And it's a one, two finish with Vinny Lanza of London getting his hand on the wall third. Boy, that is exactly what you wanted 
from Cali at this point, a one-two finish, especially from a guy that you didn't think was going to be there for second. He has not been in the top three yet this season. And that's Marcin Sislak, who ha went 49-6. And I think, I think, uh, I think Caleb was a little bit more excited about his performance than even his own. To be able to get in there, have that great start. Again, he was out in 23-2, just a tick slower than 23-1. Back in 26 flat, though. That's the key. So he's got a lot of staying power coming home. About three-tenths faster than anybody else. So the guy who came home second fastest, say slack. And that's why he got second at 49-6. Well, the battle has begun between the only two unbeaten teams. Two wins for the Condors to start things off, and they lead it with 29 points. All right, there she is, Kira Toussaint, backstage for London, trying to get the roar onto their winning ways for the first time here in match number eight, early lead for the Cali Condors. 29 points, Tokyo currently second with 16, and the London Roar with 15 points. So we're just getting started. We talked about at the onset, Friday, also the importance of this match for the New York Breakers. For Cali, Tokyo, and London, this is their third of four matches in the regular season, but for New York, this is all she wrote. Final one, and they hope they've done enough on the table to get into the semifinals. I think they have. I, I think they're going to slip ahead of Aqua and, and, and DC, and I think they've done enough. They certainly have had a tough battle here, tough road to hoe here the last three or four weeks. Almost every week they're going at it against the very best, so I think they've done enough. All right, four swimmers rated in the top 10 and the ISL in this event. The only one that has won this event is in lane number five. It's Beta Nelson. She got the win in match number four over Amy Bilquist. Toussaint was second to Bilquist. Not a whole lot though separating them, only seven tenths of a second. Talked about Dusan. She was enjoying the ISL so much that she's elected to stay with the London War. That is big for them because, of course, this event, the ISL record belongs to Minna Atherton, who did so many big things for London a season ago. But one of the Australians that didn't make the journey here for ISL 2020, obviously likely to come back in ISL 2021. And early on, it's Tokyo and the Frog Kings. Jumping out to the early lead. Vita Nelson had an outstanding collegiate career at Wisconsin. Broke every record in the book in the 100-yard backstroke. And in the 200-yard backstroke, she did break the NC2A and meet record. So she's a very good swimmer. I think once she starts to figure out how to swim long course, she could be very dangerous next summer in heading to the Olympic trials and the Olympic Games for the United States. Natsumi Saki out of lane number eight, the leader. The Asian Games, bronze in the 50 back, gold in the 100 back, silver in the 200 backstroke, and she continues to push the pace. Yeah, she was 59 flat going out, and her teammate, Shariah, was 59.6. They were the only swimmers to break a minute, except for Nelson, who was 59.97. But here comes Nelson now, looking much better here, this third 50. Check her split the third 50, Bernie, 30 point. 31 flat there. Sakai fell off to 31.5, and Shirai went 32.8, so she's really hurting. All right, Sakai in the lead, but Bita Nelson is going to look to snatch it away here, and they're going to turn even. Sakai out in eight. Bita Nelson in lane number five. Look at how what long Bita Nelson see that turn? stays underwater, and she does it with the fifth stroke. Incredible finish there for Nelson as she wins it for the second time in her career. What a last 25 meters for Bita Nelson. Unbelievable. Again, the time not that impressive, but the race. What you get in there and can do, and you see Jason Lezak, the GM, 
Boy, he's got to be thrilled. The way she performed in that race, the way she remained patient, that's the key is she's out in a minute flat. She comes home in 102.3. But split-wise, that's about right. But what she did the last 25, watch her here. Blue cap. Now look at the far right. There's Sakai right there. One, two, three, four, five strokes Sakai takes before Beat and Nelson even pops to the surface. Unbelievable. Beautiful shot, guys. Great replay there. Watching Beat and Nelson doing it all the way home. Condors three for three after Beat and Nelson gets the win. In the backstroke, jackpot fashion, 17 points. Headed to the Condors. And we're headed back down to the pool deck with Mark. All right, who's going to be the one to snatch away this great start for the Cali Condors, the 200 backstroke. It's an intriguing race. Six of the eight lanes filled with an ISL top 10 rated swimmer. Yari over in lane number seven, Ryasuki for the Tokyo Frog Kings. Olympic silver medalist. There he is on the left side of the screen in this 200 backstroke. One of the deepest fields, right, Bernie? We've seen, I mean, thus far this season, six of the nine fastest so far this season. The only person really missing out of this is a couple is Ryan Murphy and Jacob Pebley. And Jacob Pebley swims for DC, who probably won't be in the semis finals. So here you have a lot of swimmers that will see each other again in a couple weeks in the semis. Uh, Diari trying to get his first win here in the 200 backstroke, second in match three, second in match five, but he's going up against Radoslav Kaveki, who's won this event three times. And for the Polish national, this really is his event. He's a three-time world short course champion in the 200 backstroke, five-time European short course champion in the 200 backstroke. But yeah. again, Diari just looks He's like so smooth. Yeah, he, he, he really does. And, and, and it really is due. You, you, you'd you like to think this guy is due to have a win here in the 200. He, he's he been the bridesmaid to Ryan Murphy a couple of times. Beautiful backstroke. You see him second from the right. And you know, I've talked about how beautiful the technique is that he has. He has just really almost perfect, as I hate to use this old cliche, but textbook backstroke. He kicks, kicks so well from the... The hips, not the knees. His hips are very high, head very still, neck relaxed, good breakouts, pushes the water back so well, so easily, never slips in the water. London's Christian Diener in the mix. He got a win back in match number two in this event. And remember, he took the skins three straight 50 backstrokes, winning that final one over Guido. And he is right there with 75 meters to go. Well, when Kaveki went 148.2, second fastest of the season, he was 52.8 going out, Bernie. He was 53.8 there. So you know he's got something left, and that right there just proved it. He went 26.9. Nobody else broke 28. Yeah, that third 50 was on a whole nother level for Radislav Kaveki, and he's opened wow. up a full body length lead. Now you got to be thinking jackpot. It's 4.3 seconds. How big of a jackpot could this be for Kaveki? Flying into the pool, uses the third 50, takes the lead, and they're four for four. Maria will finish second and Diener third. Jeez, what did he do the second 50? He made them all look like age group swimmers the second 50 and these are some of the best in the world you see him being congratulated by his teammate Coleman Stewart but Kaveki goes out in 53-8 his next two 50s 26-9 and 27-3 that is 56-2 going home 
pretty good going home. 148-1, still only the only second fastest this season to Ryan Murphy, but he's gaining on them. What a start for the Cali Condors, winning the first four events. All right, backstage, Adam Petey getting ready, but first 200 breaststroke. And man, this is a race, Rowdy, where we have five swimmers included in this field that have won this event at one time or another. But leading the way, Lily King, who's won the 200 breaststroke six times. She's coming off her fastest time ever in history in the 200 breaststroke. She seems like she's on form, but it would appear she's won 25 straight events that today is going to be a pretty big test for Lily King. A big test. Seven of the ten fastest thus far this season. Five of the top six. The only person missing of the six, Kelsey Wog, who won this event earlier today. And Lily King will certainly have her hands full. Having said that, her time is a full second faster than Kelsey Wog and certainly anybody else in this field. So, you know, Lily has talked about the world record many times in this event. She would love to get the world record. Love to get the world record in all three of them. She does not have own a short course meters world record. She has the long course, 50 and 100. Doesn't have the short course. This would be a fun one to kick off a world record in. The world record, 214.5 by Rebecca Sony, set 11 years ago. She's about a second and a half off that pace in the last match. Well, she told Mark after those 216 flats, she said, you know, I, I really want to break that world record. And that, that's a great goal to have. When she went 216 flat, Bernie, she went out in 105 flat. That's the sixth fastest performer in history. And it doesn't take long. <laughs> My goodness. And man, Roddy, she has just loved the new format of ISL 2020. She's loved the jackpot. She scored 87 and a half points in her first match to be the match MVP. And Ray Luce has got her cruising at the pool, really training hard from what we understand, obviously from a distance. Is she swimming 100? Is, is this the 200 breaststroke? It is 200 breast, right? Yeah. 30.2 going out is a great split, a fantastic split on going out in 100. Forget about 200. That is really flying. I don't know if she went a little bit too fast going out. 104.8, a little bit under what she, so she backed off that second 50, no doubt. 104.8, so she went from 30.2 to 34.6 her second 50, and actually her second 50 was even slower than Molly Renshaw from New York Breakers, who was 34.5, and has moved up to second, having a good race right now for New York. I think she just went after it a little too strong, the first 50, you think that's I, the strategy? Yeah, th again, I think she, I, I think she's doing a lot what Callie and Lund are doing. They're gonna, they're gonna play, they're not necessarily playing games, but they're playing with different types of strategy. And there she goes with a 35-9. So that's exactly what she went in the third 50 before. But Escobedo now is starting to move up a little bit. Escobedo's split right there was 34-7. Yeah, she so was only she a half a really second behind. All right, look uh, at this. Lily looked. You, you, you saw it right there. She gave a look to her left. King coming home, trying to remain unbeaten. Escobedo trying to get the win, but Ho oh, King, she remains perfect. 215.80. That's a new ISL record. It worked. She slashed off about two tenths of a second. And what a swim for Emily Escobedo. We're going to brag all we can about Lily King, and she deserves it. But Emily Escobedo was 216.5. She won her lifetime best by over a second. She really raced Lily King, especially that second 100. It, it was a tale of two 100s, so Escobedo, 106.5 going out. And then she came home in 109.9. Lily King blew it out in 104.8 and then came home in 30, uh, 110. So a completely different type of race, but Lily King goes her best time and gets a little closer and a little closer to that world record. 
What did I say? Four world records? I didn't yeah. even count this one. Well, 28 for 28 in swims here. Let's go down to the pool deck to Mark, who's with the winner. Yeah, King was thinking that she was unbeaten. She didn't realize that her team oh, really? was unbeaten. <laughs> but things get a whole lot more difficult for Callie here. Yes, they've added Nick Fink, who's been out for the start of the season with a wrist injury. By the way, he won this event in Vegas a year ago, going 202-34. But this season, Marco Koch and Anton McKee have both gone faster than Fink went a season ago in Las Vegas. And... Marco Koch, who's won this event four times, dancing around the world record. We almost saw Amari Saki set a world record of the 50 breaststroke earlier. The current world record holder and Pragoda on the right. Koch is hoping at the end of this battle, he will be the world record holder. Well, it's just like the 50 freestyle for women earlier today where we had the two fastest swimmers in history go at it, Rokormova Yo-Yo and Shoystrom. And we've got the same tonight with Pragoda and Kolk. And Kolk, I think, has been the real class thus far. World record, 2-0-0-1-6 by Pragoda. The, the, the great thing about Pragoda's world record was he was not afraid to attack and attack it early. He was out in 57-6. Pergoto, I mean, uh, Kalk was a full second behind that when he went at 2005. Swimming reimagined indeed. How much fun is this, Freddie, that we've been here for a couple of weeks and the world's best swimmers continue to battle against one another? Right now, Koseki, who has just been fabulous, he was an Olympic finalist in the 100 and the 200 breaststroke. Koseki was 2.04 his first time up. 59.5, 58.6 rather for Koseki. And Kalk is 58.7. So he's exactly the same time he went out in when he went 2.005. He's got to really nail this third 50. That's the key. He was 30.7, Bernie, on the third 50 earlier. I think he needs to be 30.2 or 3 to have a chance. Well, right now, he and Koseki are neck and neck, 128.7. That was the world record split. 30 point, no, no, 31.1. So now he's falling off. But still, this is a great race. Koseki's giving him all he can handle right now. And Tokyo has come to swim today. That's put in some great swims so far. All right, Koseki trying to get the first win, or will it be Marco Koch getting his fifth 200 breaststroke win. Cock coming home. And 201.40, New York, New York. Cock getting the win, breaking the streak of the first five going to the Cali Condors, and he does so in jackpot fashion. Here's general manager Tina Andrew looking on. Marco Cock, 15 points with that win and for new york in the battle right now they find themselves currently fourth but that'll certainly help their total I, I think i think a lot of these teams know where they're at lily just talked about it hey we went back to work this week we're kind of knowing that we're going to get to those semis and i think hawk did the same thing i i i think after he went that 2005 he said you know what it's time to go back to work we've done the job here now let's shoot for the semifinals. New York is not an automatic for the semifinals, but if they get there, that's where he'll gonna rat. That's where he'll go for it all together, and it has a good chance to go down and a good chance to be the first man to break one two minutes. Now look at Cali, no points as New York Breakers scores 15 on the back of Marco Koch, who gets the win. Who's down with Mark?
right, our first opportunity for double points. 400 freestyle relay, 18 points to the winner. Eighth place scores only two points. What are we to look for here on this one? Right in the middle of the pool, lanes four and five. That's where your eyes will be peeled the entire race between Cali and London. Who else? And I think London has a big advantage here. I, I really do. I mean, right on paper and what they performed here so far, they're two and a half seconds ahead of Cali. Even though Cali did win this relay earlier in, in the match, London also won. And Bernie, I, again, I'm talking about the relays earlier where, you know, you don't have a Shoistrom at the end, that, that one superstar that, that it can turn to like the men do with Dressel, even though Cali is incredibly deep, they don't have that swimmer that can pop a 51 low. Smaliga's been 52-5 leading off. You see her right there. I mean, but Freya Anderson was 51-1 when she anchored her relay and 51-5 leading off. So, so Maliga's going to have to jump on this right away. I think she definitely has that capability to break 52. Just don't know if she can do that here, and I don't know if that's going to be enough to beat London. Boy, but Smaliga has, I mean, broken American record in the 50 back, top time in the 100 back, almost broke the world record in that. And she is going out for it, no doubt about it, 24-8. And even if she's close to Anderson, that's the, that's the key here. You see Anderson start to creep up on her, Bernie? Even if she's close, that kind of gives them a little bit of a fighting chance. Right now, Tokyo, you can see at the bottom, they are in second with 56 points. Kali Condor is leading the way. But again, with that new jackpot rule, anything can happen. You get a jackpot and Look up and London could surge right back into the lead. We expect later today that London might be the favorite to win both of the relays so they could potentially control both of the skin picks. They are favored in three of the four relays and this is one of them. And that was the lead off that Callie had hoped for and London not so much. Anderson was 51-8, Smaliga 52-2, her best time this year so far. So that's pretty much the kind of leadoff you really needed from Olivia Smaliga, just perfect. All right, Hines is going to carry the lead. Oh, Hines has done so much for Cali. Uh, almost every single relay you'll see her on. Free relay, mixed free, medley relay. Who's done so much for Callie, and, and she does it once again, 52-3. She's just money when it comes to that. Kamenova, on the other hand, 53 flat. That is much slower than she went last week. In fact, she was a full second slower. So all of a sudden, just that one swim, Bernie, can turn the tables in a hurry. Erica Brown swimming against Waddle. We told you at the onset how important Marie Waddle was for the London Roar. Can she pull London even? I don't think she's going to. She's certainly not going to go by her. And this is another woman for London who went 51 7. Remember, they are two and a half seconds faster than London, than Cali is on paper, what they've done this far this season. So right now, it is dead even. 51-9 for Erica Brown. Spectacular split. First time Akali has been under 52. Waddle's 52-1. So she outsplit Waddle. But it was a much better turn there for Allison Schmidt. It looked like Hannah Hopkins had pulled even, but Schmidt came out in front. Hopkins trying well, they, to track down the Condors. They both split 52 flat last week on their relay. So you know these women right here are dead even. And they're going to show it right here with 25 meters left to go. Oh, wow. That was a great turn for Anna Hopkin. London takes the lead. London gets the win. Hopkin, she does it. What a split. What a job for London. 51-7 for Anna Hopkin on the end. Wow, 
Boy, they needed that one too. What you got to remember? Double points. Look at that. They were dead even going low. Oh, you're right, Bernie. Look at the turn right there. Didn't kind of break out of the hole quite as well as she probably would have liked. She came up with some water on the back of that arm. But boy, what a great turn as far as the underwater dolphin kick goes. That's where she was so good. And 51-7, 52-5 on Allison Schmidt, solid, but not quite enough. London gets the real A win and they move in front of Tokyo. All right, Caleb Dressel awaiting the second of his eight events he's scheduled to do across two days. And for the first time ever in his ISL career, he is about to battle against Vladimir Morozov. Dressel's won this event four times. Morozov won this event three times a year ago. Morozov was with Team Iron, so those two never got a chance to do battle. And Takin and Michael Andrew, and this becomes quite an intriguing one. Yeah, Dressel swam in the final with Cali. Iron didn't even make it, so therefore they did not have a chance to swim in the ISL season last year. So it's always fun to be able to see that. We're gonna see that a couple times where we have the two best go at it. Dressel, world record holder. Moore's off the fourth fastest performer in history. Lily King, Alia Axenson to come in the 50 breaststroke. Moore's off right now tied with Zabo for the fifth fastest time this season at 20.98. Not sure where Dressel's at in his training. Won the 100 fly with the best time of the season. Not the best start for Dressel, but pretty good, 0.62. Matsui was quickest at 0.57. Well, he's the first to the turn, and Dressel will be the one that they'll try to track down. And they're not going to do it. Caleb Dressel getting his second win of the day, and it's going to be Michael Andrews second, and Morris off there. That's a great swim for Michael Andrews. Remember, he was second to Florent Manadou, and now second to Caleb Dressel. It's just a matter of time between my, before Michael Andrews starts to win some of these 50s along the way. But watch Dressel right there in lane five. You know what? He has such maturity on the blocks. And, and again, his reaction may not be the best, but the momentum, the pure explosion he has getting into the water, coming off the blocks, he just transitions so well from in and out of the turn, in and off the blocks. It's just, and that finish is always so good. 20.65, best time of the season. Still second to Manadu, but only now a tenth of a second. The Condors just keep winning. They now have 106 points. And Tokyo leaps back over the London Roar to take second with 83 points. And we were talking earlier about if London wins at the end, what event they might choose. We said this might be potentially one of the events just because of how good the Cali Condors are. Probably not picking breaststroke going up against Lily King, though you still would have Ali Atkinson. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I was talking to Mark in the production meeting earlier, and, you know, Mark Foster said, you know what? You know, they may pick this because they don't want Cali to win it. So I think if, if they did pick the 53, they would not be favored to win. I think Kasia Vasek would be favored to win. She's been the fastest time thus far this season. Seven tenths of a second ahead of Freya Anderson, who's been 24 flat. She's been 23-3. So they may not win it, but at least they would say Cali can't win it. Either way, it's going to be a very difficult choice if, that's an if, if London wins that women's medley relay coming up in a little bit later on. Well, Vasek far and away in the field mm -hmm. has the fastest time for sure. 23-3, seven tenths better mm. than Olivia Schmoliga. And in a 50, uh, 
It's almost a jackpot. She could potentially jackpot the entire field, Roddy. Yeah, 0 0.95 is the jackpot. So Vasek has just had a resurgence in a career that once was thought dead. Can't count out Kamenova for London or Freya Anderson who just joined the team, but Vasek has been so good so far. Well, the, the thing with Freya Anderson is, is she's best, no better, she's the better swimmer than anybody else the last 25 meters, but look at Vasek go. Almost a full body length lead for Vasek. She gets the win. Oh, it's one, two. Her teammate, Zirkova finishes second, and that'll put a smile on Tina Andrews' face. New York, New York, big time swim. Vasek, 12 points plus Zirkova, 7, 19 points in that race. 23, 4, 7. And that is, well, that's, she's had two of the three fastest times this year. That rating is just gonna start to skyrocket because she just dominated a wonderful field. And uh, it, it's just made it not even close. So I don't know if I'd pick this as a skins. <laughs> Maybe I would pick the 50 breaststroke. <laughs> <laughs> Vasek, big win for New York. All right, backstage, uh, Melanie Margalis, Sydney Pickram, sharing a moment before they battle in the 200 IM. We've yet to see the Tokyo Frog Kings get a victory. And uh, if the battle a couple of days ago is any tale to be told, this one should be pretty good. Men's 200 IM. Hagino's going to be out in seven. Vizeos in four. Those two separated by just a couple of tenths. The last time they met 0.12, in fact. Andreas Vizeos has won this event three times. He's on the right side. 44th rated ISL swimmer overall. Paired with Duncan Scott, two-time national champion back at NC State. And that Brady was actually in the 200 butterfly. This is the one weakness that, at least coming into this event, that Cali has had on the men's side. Zoranik and Bentz, although fine international swimmers, they haven't been very strong here. Much better in the 400 IM, they both are, but Vazayos and Hagino. And then, I, I'd watch Lane too, if Joe Litchfield is close to either one of Vazayos or Hagino, he could make some noise. He'll be down there in lane number two for New York. He's got the best freestyle of anybody, but Vazayos and Hagino swim a very, very similar race. One has a faster fly, Hagino. Vazayos has a faster breast, but they are dead even on the back and free. Top two swimmers in ISL 2020. And Hagino, the second fastest of all time. He's out in lane number seven, and as you mentioned, he is getting after it in the butterfly. Yeah, he's he's got the fastest fly without question of anybody in the group. And they will be very, very close together on the backstroke, where Vizayos will start to catch Aguino will be on the breaststroke. And again, you see Joe Litchfield right where that dark cap in this lane number two. He's got to keep it close. If he can keep within about a half a body length of either one of these swimmers, he keeps getting better. He was 154.8, getting third the first match. In match six, he went a second and a half faster at 153.5. So he's got a chance, but he's got to do it in the breaststroke. Hagino leads the charge. Let's see the deficit they have to make up. Vizeos and Scott, a second back. 27-6 for Vizeos and 27-3 for Hagino. So Hagino was a little bit faster there on the backstroke than Vizeos, but Vizeos should be faster here on the breaststroke. Watch him in the middle. He's starting to move up a little bit. Again, they are very, very similar in the freestyle. But we'll give the nod to Hagino, but only by a half second Vizeos able to cut a half second off the lead. Scott has fallen a full 
extra second behind, and now he's in a battle with Litchfield for third. Yeah, this is exactly what we saw a couple weeks ago. Uh, 13 one hundredths of a second separated him, and I think Vizayas is going to get him again. He got him again on the turn, and London roaring to the win in the 200 IM. Vizayas gets the victory. Well, Hagino comes in as the second fastest swimmer in history. Vasayos is no slouch. He's the fourth fastest swimmer in history. <laughs> this guy's really good. 152.41. That now becomes the fastest swim of the season. 152.6 for Hagino. He goes faster than he's been all year. Nice job for Duncan Scott to grab third. 154.4. Way off his best time, but he had a great freestyle leg right there at lane number three for London. So London finishes 1-3 there, Bernie. That'll and, help out the cause. Yep, that will definitely help him out. And look at this, London now within four points of the Cali Condors. <laughs> this is how you do it, folks. 18 points for London, zero points for the Cali Condors and the Roar are within four. All right, 200 IM. And this is an interesting event because we have four swimmers that have one, including there she is, Abby Wood on the right side of the screen. Melanie Margallis is gonna be in lane number five. She has won this the most in the field with five wins. Inside of her is going to be Sydney Pickram, who's won this event two times, and Ohashi. She's been unbeaten, Roddy. Two for two. This is, this is the race of the meet on paper. No question about it. The top four swimmers in the ISL this year, and all four of them have won this event. And you throw in Megan Small, who is the seventh. You got five of the... Seven fastest swimmers, and look at that trio right there, Bernie. Abby Wood was spectacular in match number six. Going a British record, or 2.047, Ohashi. Well, you know what she's capable of doing. Wow, what a field. Melanie Margallis, American record. She broke the very first week. And, and this is the only race for Melanie Margallis. She has scratched up to this point. That could change, but she scratched up to this point the 400 freestyle a little bit later on. So this is all she's got today. Well, Pickram and Margallis both met in the final in Las Vegas, and the win went to Pickram. Well, Margallis, as I've said all season long, is back half all the way. Her front half, not that strong. But nobody, I think, in the world right now is better on the back half of an IM, especially the 400 IM. But, yeah, the 200 IM, I'll say it, than Melanie Margallis. If she can kind of hang tight here going out with Abby Wood, who right there in lane number two is just the opposite. She is a speedster going out. And look at Abby Wood go. She has no fear, none whatsoever. Well, she and Mark Gallis are the only two swimmers that have gotten under 205 in ISL 2020. And it's Wood that leads the way over Ohashi. A full second ahead of Mark Gallis. But here comes Melanie Mark Gallis. Here comes Ohashi. Melanie Mark Gallis was 35-4 on the split in breaststroke. Wood was 36-1 on her breast. Margallis is without a doubt the best breaststroker, but she is even stronger in freestyle, and she's going to go by Wood, and Ohashi, and the two Japanese swimmers, Teramura, is right there as well. Oh, what a race. Margallis is into the lead. And she's breathing right into Wood. You see Wood right, Wood right in front of you, Bernie. Now she's going to swim into the Tokyo swimmers on the way back. She was 29-4 coming home the other day when she went... 204 flat, 29-4. Nobody was even close. Margallis taking Goodbye. it to a whole nother level. Second 100 helps Margallis get the win. I told you, 
She is just unbelievable. The last 100 meters of a race. She almost breaks her own American record. 35-5, 29-4 on the last 50. Only Sydney Pickram broke 30 on the last 50. She was fifth. <laughs> she was, and, and, and Abby Wood was so good the first 100. Again, fearless going out. And that's what she had to do. She knew she had to go out for it because she couldn't match Melanie Margalis that last 50. So she had to do all she could. Her When she went 204.7, she was 30.6 coming home. So she's not going to be able to get home with a Melanie Margalis. But what a, what a swim by Melanie. And Wood gets third, 205.5, followed up that 204.7 with a solid 204.055. Well, London got within four, but Callie pushing back as Margallis gets the win. It is time for the 50 breaststroke. Morris off back on. He's won this one. Nick Fink, we talked to you about the addition of having him back for the Cali Condors and what a game changer he is. He won this event at ISL's 2019 final in Las Vegas out with a wrist injury from some of his cross-training activities. And it's Fink and Dressel in five and six. Third time today, by the way, that we have seen Caleb Dressel. Nick and Fink. Adam, Adam Petey. Yeah, Nick Fink was eighth in the 200 breaststroke. So, you know, it's going to take him a while to kind of find that stroke, find that pace in a 200. But the guy's got a lot of speed. Oh, this is, a, this is another good one. And you got Moores off and Dressel, part two. And Dressel gets off to the best start. He will turn first. He battled with Sachi in the skins all the way down to the oh. final. And look at that turn for Caleb Dressel. Here comes Petey. Petey coming home. Here comes Petey. And Petey's got him at the end. Oh, Adam Petey. What closing speed. <laughs> Two good friends, never really swim against each other internationally. You only will see it here in the ISL. And Petey gets the best of him on the start itself. He was .56 on the start. By far the quickest of anybody. .62 again, he, Dressel lives with .62. He actually had the better pullout, look at that. He really gets the distance on the pullout, but look at the charge that Petey makes in that green cap in the middle. Oh, what a charge. Whoa, what turnover. And Andrew had another great swim getting second. That's his second second place finish of the day. Nice swim for Michael Andrew. Well, Petey charging not only to win the 50 breaststroke, but to move London into the lead. They lead Cali now by two points as Adam Petey wins the 50 breaststroke for the third time in his ISL career. All right, this has been the moment we've been waiting for for so long. For the first time ever in ISL history, Lily King matching up against Alia Atkinson. King's won this race six times. Atkinson's won this race five times. And King remains unbeaten for the moment. What a pickup by London to grab Alia Atkinson from Iron. That's the reason why they did not compete against each other in the finals last year. Iron did not make it. Atkinson, Bernie is fresh. First time she has swum today. Atkinson 
King. We saw her swim the 200 breaststroke. How much does she have left in the tank? You throw in Molly Hannes, who's the sixth fastest performer in history, three of the six fastest swimmers in history right here, Atkinson and King. And one and two. Probably the biggest test to date. Can Atkinson hand Lily King her first ever ISL loss? Look at the smile on King's face. <laughs> she was looking over at Lily King. All right, here we go. Dead even on the start. Both of them, 0 .67, 0 .68, not much of a difference there. Hannes is taking it out fast. Yeah, the advantage goes to Molly Hannes. She's going to be the one to turn first. Will she hand Lily King her first loss? But no, look at the turn by Lily King. King I don't is know. coming surging home. Hannes is coming surging Here home. Here comes Atkinson. Oh, King, she is going to hold She did it again. 28 for 28. Lily King by five one hundredths. The Condor is soaring to a one-two finish. <laughs> There's John T. Skinner, the head coach right there, along with Jason Lezak. You know, <laughs> how does she do it? I, sooner or later, she's got to lose. I mean, you would think at some point, Atkinson on the left, King on the right, Look at those two going right into the turn, but right above them both, that's Molly Hannes taking the charge. And Molly Hannes almost beat Lily King. Watch him come off that wall right there. That's Hannes, excuse me, that's Lily King right there in the middle. Hannes over there at the very bottom, and look at Hannes, she's got it. She's got it. Uh-oh. No, she doesn't. Yes, she does. No, she doesn't. And it's Lily King on a long touch at the end by five one hundredths of a second over her teammate, and back and forth we go. Still the queen of breaststroke, still unbeaten in her ISL career. And Lily King has the Cali Condors back on top with 147 points. Back and forth we go, the two unbeaten teams in ISL 2020 battling here in match number eight and it's King who gets her hand on the wall first once again for Cali. All right the boys are back in town battling now in the 400 freestyle relay that it's a, a big nod to London today in the relays. They already took their first relay. But is this the one relay that it might go, not go the Roar's way? It's the only one they're not favored in. Let, let, let's put it this way. that The dilemma for Cali is just how many times can you go to the bank with Caleb Dressel? Right? He literally got out of the 50 breaststroke seven minutes ago. You see him walking out right there. He didn't even bother putting his warm-ups on. And, and how much does he have left? He will go, he will anchor, so he'll have an extra three or four minutes before he has to swim again, but uh, that's just, it's a lot to ask. Now, having said that, Duncan Scott just got out of the 200 IM a few minutes ago, so you know, it, these guys are all swimming multiple races. Vizayos just got through a, got through a race uh, to 200 IM. Yeah, think about the, the type of pain and agony for these athletes with all the racing that they do over two hours. Dressel, the current leader in the MVP standings with 27 points. Lily King second with 21 points and Adam Peaty currently third with 16 points. Ah. Mass track goes for Cali. Lanza goes for London. I think, I think those two teams right there in four and five, blue cap, Cali, dark cap right in the middle of the pool. That's London. I think these two teams are still the teams to beat. I think New York will be there early. I think Tokyo can be there early, but I just don't think they have four that can match up with these other two teams. Yeah, the Frog Kings are there early. 
least on the first 50 of the first leg. Mostrak was 46-8 on last week's relay. Lanza was 46-7. And right now, boy, Lanza needs to get himself back into it. New York is hanging in there with Wheeling. And nice job there for Tokyo at 46-9 for Shiora. Yeah, Shiora leads the way for the Frog Kings. Bakovashev into the pool for London. Justin Ress into the pool for the Cali Condors. Ress did not swim this relay. In fact, for Cali, Bernie, Justin Ress and the next swimmer, Seaslack, have not swum on the 400 free relay for men yet. So this is their first opportunity. Or at least they didn't swim on it last week. I think this is the first time that Seaslack coming up is going to swim for Cali. What he had a great start to the meet in the 100 meter butterfly for men. He was second to Dressel at 49.6. So that's a great entry right there for Cali. Ah, look at Bakovashev. He's pulled London to within two one hundredths of a second. Uh, you know, they both had good splits, though. Vakovashev was 45-9, but Justin Russ was a solid 46-2. Bernie Cali actually is in third now, too, with Bakla. It's 46-7. All right, Kush hoping that he can give the lead over to Duncan Scott, who has to be a little bit fresher at the moment than Caleb Dressel. Kush has been 46-5, and this is just... This is the wild card in Seaslack. What will he have left after that, after that 100 fly about an hour and 20 minutes ago? And Seaslack's having a great last 25. All right, the Condors in the lead. They give it over to Caleb Dressel. 46-8 for Seaslack. Kush has fallen off to a 47-7. So he's about a half a second slower than he went last week. Hey, Roddy, this is just like a great Troy training session for yeah. Caleb Dressel. <laughs> You're right. Greg Troy would say, okay, we're going to swim three or four more before the end. I think it's great. I think Greg Troy has done such an amazing job with Caleb Dressel and so many wonderful Olympians. And, you know, he's got his head right. And now look at him go. The one relay I think Cali is going to win, and they will. All right, the Condors, 18 points for a relay win. London second, Tokyo third. And so the Condors are going to remain on top. Backstrokes, 400 free, and the all-important medley relay still to come here on day one. All right, four in the top ten in the ISL ratings. The matches just keep getting better. And we have four swimmers in this field who have won this event. Galerme Guido in four, Diener right next to him in three. Those two swam against each other in the skins. Diener, believe it or not, has the fastest time in the field so far at 22-7 when he won this event in match two. Surprised everyone, I think, when he took down Guido. Yeah, that puts him in the top 10 performers of all time. Guido is the second fastest in history. The only person been faster, is, and he's here with us, but not today. He swam this morning, Flo Manadu, who has the world record of 22-22, and there is Guido right there, number one. The beard has come off, and Guido's ready to go. And London could take back the lead oh, yeah. on this event they for could. sure. They definitely could here. Guido and Diener, the only group in this field to break 23 this year. London, Guido, great start. Point, point five six, very similar to Sons. Quick off the blocks. And Guido in the middle of the pool in lane number four, the first into the turn. And right next to him is Diener. Diener and Guido, but all Whoa. in lane number six, Coleman, Coleman Stewart. Stewart. And Stewart pulls off the upset out of nowhere. Coleman Stewart. 
I'll say it again, mustache and all, Coleman Stewart. <laughs> That'll pump you up in a hurry. 23.21. What a close. What a close by Coleman Stewart. And you saw Guido right in front of you get off that blazing start. But watch Coleman Stewart. He goes in behind. He goes in third. Great underwater. He's three from the left. Watch that breakout. The breakout was the key for him. That gave him the momentum and the force to have that long body in the wall. Sensational career at NC State, and now sensational for the Cali Condors. And that's an upset, any way you look at it. And by the way, Michael Andrew disqualified a tenth of a second, separating Stewart from Guido, but the Condors win the 50 back. All right, Leah Smith backstage for the Tokyo Frog Kings trying to get Tokyo right back in the mix. They're currently third with 153 points. Cali Condors still clinging to that nine and a half point lead. As it's time for the men's and women's 400 freestyle, then we'll have the 400 medley relay. It's a full field full of a bunch of swimmers again, rated in the top 10 and the ISO ratings, including Leah Smith, who is the top rated swimmer in this event. She's won it twice. Both times right at four minutes. So 4001 on the last one she swam, and Haley Anderson uh, checked that flicking her, and Anderson will be very good here. Yes, yeah, Smith has won it twice. Flickener has won it twice. Anya Kelsey, she's won it once. And Holly Hibbett has won this event twice. But that happened a season ago. She actually won it in London, as you see Leah Smith. This is pretty much the lone event for her. She swims at 200 freestyle, an amazing long course swimmer. Olympic gold medals as part of the 800 free relay for the United States, but this is her best event, the 400, without question. Olympic silver medalist in this event. At Tokyo, they have yet to win an event. Their best chance earlier on was Hagino, who lost the 200 IM to Vazeos. Cali with 10 wins. London with four wins here on day number one. Five swimmers have broken four minutes, Bernie. So again, another, another great field. And those five swimmers include two from Tokyo, two from, uh, one from Cali, one from London, and, uh, and Kapish from, from the New York Breakers has broken four minutes. So there are a lot of, historically great swimmers, but again, early on, the two Tokyo swimmers are taking it out fast. This would be big for Tokyo as they try to move up the total. The New York Breakers, they won two events today with Vasek and Marco Koch. Yeah, this, this would be big for Tokyo if they could certainly win it but also move up on the board and close the gap a little bit with London and Cali because I don't think they have a shot at winning either medley relay boy I wish they wish they could win that medley relay for women because they would instantly choose the 50 freestyle as their skins still may get chosen believe it or not but now I've got to believe with Toussaint and that 50 backstroke, maybe they go with a 50 back if they win that relay. Who knows? Atkinson has it in the 50 breast. Waddle in the 50 fly. Anyway, 158-1 for Smith. Igarashi, 159 flat. They're the only two that broke two minutes. And they're in command here uh, this 400 freestyle again. It's one of the good news is uh, for all the athletes that swam before that 
Medley really upcoming, but at least you have two 400s in between to, to cool down, get ready for the event that may very well help determine which team wins this match. A lot of these 400 swimmers have to sit around for about an hour and a half before they're able to swim. So the first time you've seen Smith and Anderson, Flickener, Hibbett, Kapish, I mean, there are a lot of swimmers this first time they've swum all night. So they've been sitting around waiting to have their opportunity. And Leah Smith is certainly making the most of hers right now. She's 30, let's see, she's 30.6 on that 50 right there. She's been 30.3, Bernie, 30.3, 30.6. So if she can be 30 point here and then get under 30 the last 50, she's got a chance to break four minutes. Pretty good chance that she's gonna go three for three in her ISL career here in this 400 freestyle, flicking her two seconds behind her in the blue cap, trying to work her way into second as she fights for second with Kapas, who's down on the left side in lane number two, but it's all about Leah Smith, Tokyo and the Frog Kings. They're gonna be able to celebrate their first win of match eight. Leah Smith getting the win and nine points for Tokyo. Crack in four minutes. I know she's done it, but it's, a, it's always a nice little barrier, especially when you've been 4005 and 4001 her first season. And right there in the middle of that pack, Dave Salo, the head coach, who's really done a great job with Kosuke Kitajima and putting this team together. Leah Smith, beautiful shot, beautiful running shot of Leah Smith and that great quick tempo that she has. She's always been good on the turns. That's never been her, her problem. Uh, hey, she doesn't have a problem. I think the dilemma for her, she's always kind of fallen in the shadow of Katie Ledecky, but she's not in a shadow right now. She is one three for three in the 400 freestyle. Tokyo and the Frog Kings. It was 14 needed points for them. New York Breakers getting 10 points. And it's Cali on top, 204. London second, 189. Tokyo third. And the New York Breakers currently fourth here as we are the majority of the way through. Day one of match eight. Interesting as we've talked about the swimmers battling back and forth this year with all these ISL records. Danis Rapsis broke. Felix Allbox, freshly minted. ISL record for match four. Earlier today, though, he lost count, believe it or not, in uh, his win. He went four, or excuse me, 340.83, and believe it or not, took about three seconds off, Rapsis did. And now we'll see what Allbach can do. Yeah, that's right. We saw him. It's a wild race, right? 350 meters, stopped for about three or four seconds. And then took off. He was on his way to going 336. That was a crazy race. Maybe they learned a little bit of a lesson. I can guarantee you that everybody knows about this now, and they're going to count right here. <laughs> An important race for the men to kind of build some momentum going into that relay. London has Tom Dean and James Guy. Haas and Wang go for Cali. James Guy won this whole thing last year in the finals, right, Bernie? I mean, he was the champ. Yeah, he went 339.99, but the winner earlier, women's 400 freestyle, Leah Smith down with Mark Foster.
Leah Smith leading the way, and maybe it's inspiring. Katashiro Matsumoto, who's out in lane number seven. He seems inspired, and uh, Felix Albach currently finds himself uh, down in lane number one, swimming uh, between second and third He's with 150 meters remaining. Moved up, though. He was seventh at the 100, third at the 200, now second. So swimming a little bit of a different race. He was 149 flat going out. When he went 337, Bernie, he was out in 147. So again, a little bit of a different strategy. He decided to come back on the back half on this, and now he's pulled uh, almost even with Matsumoto. I'll call it basically even. Three tenths of a second, Townley Haas is currently third, but Matsumoto trying to take both, uh, both of the 400s, but Albach looks just a little bit fresher at this moment, doesn't he? Abak starting to look really good. Right next to him is his teammate, Brendan Smith. So he can put himself back into this here with 50 meters left to go after this wall. It's three, probably three people right now have got a chance at this. Abak has gone into first. Townley Haas moved into second. And look at this for New York. They got a chance to pick up some big points because Brandon Smith is right there as well with the group. But Albach, he was so patient, but he surged ahead at the right time. Now trying to fight off Townley Haas, and Albach has won the 400 freestyle for the second time. New York, New York, once again, 400 freestyle winners. 339 flat. So he goes out in 149 flat. Bernie comes home in 150 flat. So basically even split that race when you throw in the start. Townley Haas, though. How about Townley Haas going 339.5? That's his lifetime best by over a second. What a swim by Townley Haas and the Cali Condors to kind of get the edge there in that 400 freestyle over London. Wow, what a swim by Tally Haas. Felix Halbach gets the win in the 400 freestyle, but don't leave us, because when we come back, it's the 400 medley relay. All right, in the call room, they are watching to see who is going to pick the skins. Women's four by 100 medley relay. And man, this one, is going to be tight. Expected again to be a battle between London and the Cali Condors. And by the way, that streak of 29 consecutive races still on the line for Lily King because not only does she win individual races, Roddy, but she's a relay winner as well. Yeah, the, the streak is there, certainly individually. It's not going anywhere today. Will it come to the end though overall here in this relay i i think it's i think it's a toss up between those two teams tokyo probably the dark horse in all of this london is about a second ahead of cali and what they've been this year so far so he's definitely going to have to do it In the front half, they do not want to get into a race with Freya Anderson at the end, who went 51 flat last week. You know Natalie Hines is capable of going 52 flat, but that's what she's got in her. You know what you're going to get from her, 52 flat, 52-2. But Freya Anderson could certainly go 51 flat. So I think Callie's going to need about a second on London to have a chance. 
about a second after the third leg. Toussaint won the 50 backstroke over Smaliga. This is the third race for Smaliga. The second race, excuse me, third race for Toussaint. Now I checked that. That's, I think it's the fourth race for Smaliga. So she is at the end of her rope right now. And you can see the speed that Toussaint who's on the left. Smaliga's on the right. They're pretty much dead even though, Bernie. 26-9 for Toussaint. 27-1 for Smaliga. A little bit better underwaters there for Toussaint. Man, the battle to see who wins the skins is going to be good. Toussaint trying Tuss to carry the lead in, but Smoliga Oh, surging. look at Smoliga go. Wow, what a last 25 for Olivia Smoliga. And she's going to give Callie a half-second lead over Tokyo, who's moved into second now. Boy, that was one heck of a final 25 for Olivia Smaliga. She saved her best length of the day for her last length of the day. And that's exactly what you want from Olivia Smaliga. 56-1, solid 56-7 for Toussaint. All right, King and Atkinson battling in the middle at the moment. Atkinson, 29-4 on the way eight, out, 29-3 for King. So not much change of hands there, that first 25. Yeah, and remember that King has swum the yeah. 200, right. the 50, and now this relay. Right, you're right, Bernie, that 200. This is the third swim of the day for her. She only has one tomorrow unless she swims the skins. All right, here we go. Good finish. Boy, Callie is finishing the races. 103-2 on Lily King. Wow, and she has given the Condors the lead. Dahlia into the pool, battling against Marie Waddle. 103-8 on Atkinson. So she kind of maintained that pace. So you think, and you're thinking to yourself, it's over. It's not over. Again, we've got a solid Natalie Hines who's been so valuable to Cal for their relays. But this thing is not over. If somehow or another Waddle can get to her toes, then this is a race. But she's got to be within a body length. How That's close the key. do they need to be time-wise, do you think? A what, second. A second? A second. If she's got a second on her, more than a second, I give the advantage to Callie. Less than a second, give the advantage to London. All right, let's see what it is. Hines dives into the pool first, and it is... One and a half seconds. Can yeah. Freya Anderson track down Hines a second and a half behind? She was 51 flat. So Hines went 52 flat last week on her relay. She was 52-3 earlier. So I don't know. <laughs> I still don't know. Uh, my guess is Callie's got this because if, if I'm Natalie Hines, I'm doing all I can is to manage that first 50. Do not overswim that first 50. Keep my eye on her, but don't overswim it. All right, and Anderson here she comes. cut the deficit by a half a second. Hines is going to turn first. Can Freya Anderson help London pick the skins? Oh, here comes Freya Anderson. Hines holding on. Here she comes. Oh, wow. Oh. Kelly holds on. <laughs> but not by much. <laughs> Good thing she didn't cut her fingernails today. Yikes. She was hurting. There's no doubt about it. Make no mistake that at the end, she was in some pain. 52-7 for Hines. So certainly not her best split, but she did her part. 51-1 for Freya, Freya Anderson. There you see Lily King. Boy, what a split she had. And she, they needed everybody's split. 103-3. And here comes Freya Anderson. Dahlia, 55-7. Brilliant on her split. But here she comes. Here she comes. Not quite. Close, but no cigar. What a swim by Freya Anderson to make this exciting. But it will be Callie. 
to pick the skins. Yeah, Lily King is happy about that. Cali Condors, they get the win. Jean T. Skinner is down with Mark Foster. Well, the good news is he gets two <laughs> hours to think about it. Yeah, they do. Well, my and again, bet just is on the like, breaststroke. Yeah, breaststroke is a great pick. Obviously, yeah. uh, be a lot of racing for Lily King, but she only had the 100 breaststroke, and it'd be gotta fun be to good. get to see gotta her and breast. Allie Atkinson battle three times, right? Would you uh, pay Although admission Smaliga to do that? Although Smaliga was great when was she did great breaststroke. great with three rounds. All right, we turn our attention now to London's chances of picking the skins on the men's side. This one's a little bit more of a slam dunk. I, well, nothing's a slam dunk in the ISL. That's one thing that these amazing athletes have proven to me. There is no slam dunk, but they have been four and a half seconds faster than Cali has. We'll call and it a, a free full throw. second How about that? faster ahead of Tokyo. More of a free throw? Yeah, I, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, I like that analogy. Good. Can I can I you cheat can take it, and copy yeah. that? Uh, it's all mine. It's like a free throw. Yep. <laughs> I thought of it. <laughs> no, you're right, Bernie. This is this is really favors London. I think it's London and Tokyo. I think Tokyo has a, a sensational relay. The the problem with Cali is they've had to move Dressel from fly to breast. They had Nick Fink swimming breast, but you know, coming back from that injury, he just didn't have it today. So they had to take Fink off, put Dressel in breaststroke, and then and then uh, put uh, on Butterfly. No, check that. They had to put Dressel to Butterfly. Cordes goes into breaststroke. That's what it was. Fink was out of breast, and now they put Cordes into breaststroke. And, and that's Guido. the weakness. And Diener. Leading the way for London, but Tokyo, they had a good start as well. They are one one hundredth of a second ahead of the London Roar. And, and this is the absolute key leg for Cali. If you're a Cali fan, Cordes has got to find a way to throw in a 56, 57 flat anyway. He can't be 58 flat or 57 high. And you see him with the blue cap right now? Falling further and further behind London. And this again, I think, is shaping up to be Tokyo and London. All right, Petey Pragoda in the green caps in the middle. Koseki, who's been very good for Tokyo, is all the way out in lane number seven. And Koseki looks pretty good for the Tokyo Frog Kings. They would love to pick the skins. Here's an interesting choice here for Tokyo. Coach Dave Salo. Going with Morozov with Butterfly. Morozov, Koseki. No, I think it's actually, they made an adjustment. It's Kawamoto. Kawamoto, you're Morozov. right. Morozov. Kawamoto has gone Butterfly. Now Morozov's going freestyle. Check that. 56-4 for Koseki. And Petey was 56-4. And at the moment, things look okay for Tokyo because... It, it depends on what Morisov we're about to see. Right. Isn't that right? You're so right, Bernie. I because mean, at the moment, if we had the, the Morisov of old, I would put my money on Tokyo, but we haven't seen that We Morisov haven't seen that, yet. though. And, and that's the reason why I like London. Unless Morisov's got something, and they're going to have the lead. Well, they're right at the lead. Three one-hundredths of a second, the difference there. And London, Vinny lands a 49-8. Kawamoto, 49-8. All right, Duncan, Scott, Morisov, Tokyo, London, battling for the skins. Morisov looks a whole lot better. 
I don't know, London looked pretty good going out. I love the way London looked going out. 49-4 for the Kofashev. Boy, B relay, London's B relay is gonna be at least third. All right, Morisov trying to push, but Duncan Scott is gonna hold him off, and oh, London, they do it. First and third in the relay, and they will pick the skins. And Duncan Scott, 46-5. 46-5 for Duncan Scott. Moore's off, 46-8. That is big for London. They will close on their event of choice. Cali Condors in the lead. After what a first day of action here, Caleb Dressel, an impressive performance. He leads the MVP battle with 31 and a half points. Lily King currently second with 25 and a half points. And in the battle of two teams that are unbeaten in ISL 2020, the edge goes to Cali, oh, but only by nine and a half points. For Mark Foster, Rowdy Gaines, and our entire crew, Bernie Gunther is saying so long for now. Back here tomorrow with more of the doubleheader.